Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I am very pleased to have an opportunity to uh, speak uh, in support and provide uh, some input into the Economic Action Plan 2015. This is certainly a plan of action, a plan to continue the necessary action required to keep our country in the focus direction needed, which has uh, made us an envy of the G7. Mr. Speaker, our government has and continues to work uh, hard focusing on the commitments to the priorities of Canadians, jobs, economic stability, growth, and long-term prosperity. Economic Action Plan 2015 clear uh, focus on job growth and security is what my constituents in the riding of Mississauga East Coxville uh, are looking for and what Canadians across the country are looking for. Uh, Mr. Speaker, back in January, uh, like many of uh, my colleagues, uh, I hosted a pre-budget consultation in my community and businesses, rep representatives in my riding, uh, <clears throat> in my riding to share their ideas and su suggestions. Representatives from uh, a number of key areas, including health, manufacturing, skilled trades, social services, businesses, and community services uh, were uh, consulted. Uh, I submitted this uh, valuable input into, to our Minister of Finance, and I'm very pleased, Mr. Speaker, to see some of these measures that were included, uh, that were included actually in this budget, in the Economic Action Plan 2015. Mr. Speaker, uh, very high skilled and highly educated workforce is a key to succeeding in the global economy. And it's also important, Mr. Speaker, that we give an equal uh, opportunity to everybody. I was uh, very uh, happy, very pleased, announcing uh, a, a, a $238,000 uh, $238, in funding for the Opportunities Fund uh, for the Center of Education in Mississauga uh, for the project to help people with disabilities overcome uh, barriers to employment. During the pre-budget consultations I held, uh, there was a gentleman, uh, his name is Mike uh, Di Donato, who is a dean of the Electrical College um, of Canada, that's located in the riding I represent, and uh, he joined in uh, the discussion of uh, the role of skilled trades and pre-apprenticeship training. Uh, we had an opportunity uh, to, to talk, and he voiced his concerns about the future of skilled trades training in, and the upcoming, uh, in the upcoming federal budget. Mr. Speaker, there is always work to be done in the area of skilled trades, but there are some measures in this budget that uh, are key to the future of skilled trades, and uh, this is something that... Uh, Mr. Uh, Di Donato was so, uh, and is so passionate about. Uh, Mr. Speaker, our government is taking action to harmonize the apprenticeship training and certifications required in targeted red uh, seal trades. Mr. Speaker, uh, the budget also proposes to reallocate up to $35 million over five years to pilot project uh, for foreign credential re recognition loans and make it permanent in order to support internationally uh, trained workers. This is important news for many uh, constituents in my riding where uh, many new Can Canadians uh, uh, come and make their home and want to contribute their skills and expertise. Mr. Speaker, we as a government have to do what we can to help create the conditions where businesses can thrive, create jobs, and move our economy. That means helping small businesses and entrepreneurs create jobs. I'm pleased to say that uh, our budget proposes uh, to reduce the small business tax rate from uh, to 9% by 
2019. Also, what is important, the support of our communities, um, and uh, this is uh, done through a number of commitments, including uh, gas tax funding. Mr. Speaker, uh, for the city of Mississauga, that means millions of dollars every year, which allows the municipality and the region of Peel to make priority investments in transportation and infrastructure and to keep people moving. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, uh, well, this budget also uh, proposes uh, several measures to help our families. Uh, the underlying point of balancing the budget is, all, uh, is that it allows us to keep focus on the lower uh, taxes and to help families and hardworking Canadians. In fact, the overall federal tax burden it's, uh, is now at its lowest uh, level in more than 50 years. Just two weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, I hosted um, a 50-plus expo for uh, people over uh, 50 years of age. It was an exciting event for local people who are at the point in their lives where important matters such as retirement planning, security and safety becomes a reality. Mr. Speaker, I heard from a number of those who came uh, that they want to remain independent. They, have, uh, they don't want and don't have to have to depend on others as they move to their later years in life. Uh, I would mention uh, some of the measures here uh, uh, in the budget uh, to support uh, seniors and people with disabilities. Uh, the budget proposes uh, the Home Accessibility Tax Credit to help seniors and people with disabilities with renovations uh, to uh, make their homes uh, accessible and to stay at that, that they, they can stay at home and be independent. Uh, we also are introducing the changes to the registered retirement income fund that will assist, uh, assist seniors and allow them to withdraw less from their tax deferred savings. Also, we are increasing the tax-free savings uh, account annual contribution from five to ten thousand dollars. This is uh, something that uh, colleagues on the uh, opposite sides are criticizing very heavily. But this is a great, great uh, uh, measure, and I have uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, comments from constituents in my writing on it. Mr. Speaker, we will always support our veterans, our heroes. Just recently, I was honored to receive a, a visit from one of them, uh, Mr. Donald Somerville, is going with a group of uh, veterans. I think uh, they're leaving this weekend to go uh, to Netherlands to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the liberation. And uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Speaker, we honor our veterans and we have to make sure that they receive everything and anything they need, especially uh, uh, when they are at their later stage of life. It is important that veterans know that they can count on support for, for their services. Our budget increases the level of individualized uh, care to veterans requiring regular support by improving the ratio of veterans to case managers. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. I understand I have one minute left, therefore I will be, I will be closing um, very, very shortly. Um, we are also introducing a new retirement income security benefit for severely disabled veterans. Mr. Speaker, I was going to speak also about the security uh, for all Canadians. This is very important. Uh, uh, people, uh, our uh, uh, Kenyan citizens, people across Canada really are looking for safe streets, safe communities, and uh, they want to make sure that our government provides measures uh, and uh, support to our security agencies that will keep, uh, that will keep us safe here in this country. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, in closing, this budget is a, a balanced budget. This was a promise made. This is a promise kept. Therefore, 
uh, I would like, in closing, to uh, ask all my colleagues in this House to support this uh, uh, budget, to at least support what Canadians are looking for. Thank you very much. Question and comment, Honorable Deputy de Sherbrooke. Merci, Monsieur le Président, et je suis heureux de poser une question à mon collègue qui a terminé son discours en parlant de sa promesse, de la promesse des conservateurs, d'équilibrer le budget, euh, parce que ça fait sept déficits, sept budgets non équilibrés de suite qu'il présente euh, aux Canadiens. Et là, aujourd'hui, il se découvre une nouvelle passion pour les budgets équilibrés, euh, alors qu'en plus, ils mettent une, une, une loi Euh, ils vont proposer éventuellement un projet de loi pour euh, contraindre les gouvernements, euh, les futurs gouvernements, à faire des budgets équilibrés, alors qu'eux-mêmes euh, n'auraient même pas respecté cette loi-là dans les cinq dernières années. Donc, euh, c'est assez surprenant et euh, pour le moins hypocrite euh, de voir un, un gouvernement euh, se dire passionné par les budgets équilibrés, alors que dans les cinq dernières années, Il, a, il ne les a pas équilibrés. Il n'a même pas respecté sa propre loi qu'il qu va proposer euh, aux Canadiens. Donc, est-ce qu'il pourrait expliquer en quoi cette nouvelle passion-là est bien sincère chez les conservateurs? OK. The Honourable Member for Mississauga East, Cooksville. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, you know what? I'm, I'm uh, as surprised as my colleague that spoke before me that all of this coming from the other side as criticism without any ideas that they can put forward. Why well, it's very easy to criticize. And well, I would uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, answer the, the member asking the question that's probably uh, he should maybe go back and read the history of what happened in the past because uh, that would probably help him understand better why there wasn't uh, uh, an investment during the uh, difficult economic time, times and how well Canada did in those past years, we've done so well that we are truly envy of other developed nations. Therefore, that's what the government is for, to act when there's a need to, to act, to work for the best of the country, to work for the best of uh, Canadians, to act when, 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 the, when the need arises. And we were able to do it to balance the budget this year without cutting, uh, without raising taxes. We are cutting taxes. The taxes are at the lowest level in 50 years. And I think the member should appreciate this because Canadi Canadians do appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions and comments. The honorable member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my friend from Mississauga East Cooksville for his presentation. And perhaps this is a question that more properly should go to the finance minister, but I haven't had a chance to put a question to the finance minister yet. The question is this, we could have balanced the budget last year had the minister been willing to go into the contingency fund. The balanced budget this year is because they went into the contingency fund. I'm not clear at all from a matter of fiscal planning why the contingency fund was needed this year, but not last year, other than the political promises that have been made based on once we balance the budget, we'll bring in income splitting and so on. In other words, I think this budget is being driven by political machinations and not actual good financial planning. And perhaps the member can explain why the contingency fund wasn't used last year to balance the budget. The Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank the member opposite for her question. And Mr. Speaker, as I uh, uh, stated before in uh, answering the first question, the government is here to do the best for the country and for Canadians. And uh, this is these measures that are included, included in this balanced budget is something that Canadians were looking for. We're helping Canadians, we're helping businesses, we're helping families, we, we are uh, helping uh, those that have challenges in life, and that, that's what is important, Mr. Speaker. This is what Canadians are looking for. They're looking for good uh, management in the, of the economy, and they're looking for the good future for their, uh, themselves and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.